Hi everyone. I'm going to see if I can share this to my personal page. Maybe it's not going to let me. I don't think it will. Okay, so I can't see anybody or anything yet, but we'll just get started. I hope everybody's having a good day today. Um, I've been thinking for the last week that got a pen on my hand. <laughs> I've been thinking for the last week that I want to do um, like a group clearing. I love group clearing so much because I feel like there's lots of energy that comes from it. And, um, you know, where multiple people are gathered, I feel like um, healing, healing comes in like a greater capacity. Um, you may have noticed in the last week, there's this like spirit of fear that's kind of been in the air and for me it's just been really palpable and it felt kind of like a like a blanket or a cloak or um I kept getting an image of like a river and like being caught up in it so I really wanted to do something to like disconnect from that energy and really just step outside of it so I this morning I was just inspired to do this and I'm like, I'm going to do it. So, um, I have a couple of notes here, some things I want to work on, but we're going to start by just, I definitely feel like, so I was getting this image of like, um, like fear kind of like floating and like being caught up in it and like not being able to find a way out. So I want to start by just doing some grounding exercises real quick. So what you can do is you can just close your eyes and if you're visual, you can imagine a grounding cord um, on your tailbone. So like you can see what kind of shape it's in. Sometimes it'll be like, mine sometimes will be like flapping in the wind or <laughs> not connected or any of those kinds of things. So you can just witness your grounding cord. If you're not a very visual person, you can just like say the words in your mind like, you know, I'm sending my grounding cord down into the earth. Um, but I see mine and it's kind of like hanging on by a thread and there's like frayed um, cording coming off of it. So what I like to do is I like to just blow up that grounding cord and then I create a new one. So it can be of whatever energy you desire. Mine actually wants to be like, um, like really strong, like metal. Um, I'm reminded of like those cords that you see like coming out of like a power thing they're like metal and they're braided. So I'm just going to create a new grounding cord, send it down my legs, down my feet, deep, deep down into the earth, um, all the way down to the center of the earth. And I, um, send out kind of like sh offshoots of it deep, like down into the earth, kind of like roots. And you can check your grounding cord. And if it feels like it's just not staying, um, sometimes I'll like hook it into the center of the earth, kind of like with a carabiner. <laughs> So your, your mind is really powerful and you can use your imagination to do anything with energy. So once you have your grounding cord secure, you can imagine earth energy coming up that grounding cord. Um, you can see what color it is. Usually it's like an earth color, like green or blue or brown even. And you just bring that energy up your grounding cord, up through your feet, into your legs, and just see it flowing up into your hip area. And it usually kind of comes up right up into my solar plexus. And it just stays right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to imagine a grounding cord from our crown going up to Heavenly Father or God or Source, whatever your verbiage is. And we're just going to connect that and bring down the energy of... God into our space. So I see it kind of coming ground down the grounding cord in and they kind of meet in the center of my body and like swirl and then just fill my whole body with grounded energy. And then what you can do is you can ground out any parts of your body that need to be grounded. So before I was seeing that the adrenals needed to be grounded and so you can ground those out and connect them into your main grounding cord. If there's any negative energy there that needs to be transmuted you can just send it down that grounding cord I'm feeling like the large intestine needs to be grounded out you can just kind of notice like in my mind I see it kind of like those organs light up that need to be grounded and so I just notice like my hands need to be grounded so I send cords down my elbows my lungs 
can I just imagine that any negative energy that's in there just goes down that grounding cord. And my throat chakra needs to be grounded. And then my head space needs to be grounded out. There's a lot of this overthinking energy going on right now. Um, so that really helps to just ground out the head space. <sighs> okay. And then um, now what I would like to do is check our auric field. So I'm, I'm feeling a lot of this like fear energy. So if you just kind of see or notice, like imagine your auric field. And then what we're looking for is um, the spirit of fear. And so like when I was looking at it earlier, they kind of look like stones that were floating in my auric field. And so if you kind of just witness those, you can imagine like picking them up and plucking them out. And I have like an energetic recycling bin that I put them into. And so I just pluck them out one by one, put them in my recycling bin. So I'm like noticing there's a lot of fear energy on the crown of my head. So um, I'm just going to kind of like suck that up with like a vacuum and just send that energy down into my recycling bin and then I'm noticing there's some more fear energy around my feet so I'm going to suck that up too keep plucking out those stones wherever you notice them again if you're not visual you can just say the words like I ask any and all stones in my org field to be removed and to recycled and transmuted and transformed into positive energy And I'm noticing I have a lot in my lungs. That's kind of usually where I absorb stuff. So I'm just going to suck all that up. And I like to replace, like if I have an open organ, I like to replace it with like light. So I'll just, I'm flooding my lungs with light. You can even pick an emotion or, or a frequency you'd like to flood it with. So like I'm filling my lungs with peace. And then make sure you check in the back. Sometimes I forget to check back there and I have a bunch of stuff floating back behind me. And then also um, you want to check for seeds of fear. So they look like tiny little seeds to me and they're just things in me that could be set off by fear. So I just like to check, do I have any seeds of fear anywhere in my org field or in my body? So like right now I'm getting there's some in my heart. So I just pluck those out and I stick them in the energetic recycling bin. I'm noticing I have some in my head. So we can just pull those out. And there's actually some in my knees. Just notice if you have them anywhere in your body. And I'm getting I have a, some in my lower back as well. And I'm tapping into the energy of everyone, so this is probably um, something that some of you might have as well. So, Okay, so we release all those seeds of fear, and then now we're going to call back all our energy that we may have left. Um, so what I find is that, you know, daily we are walking around you know, among other people and we just kind of catch things or we leave our energy places and, um, or maybe like we were scrolling Facebook and we read an article about like coronavirus or something and like we kind of got caught up in the fear and so we left some of our energy there or, so what we're going to do is we're just going to do this exercise to call back our energy. So imagine a big gold sun above our heads and it's got a magnet inside of it that's made especially for you. It magnetizes all of your energy so what I like to do is I like to say I'm calling back all my energy from all dimensions and directions to be returned to me clean, clear, whole, and free from anything that doesn't belong to me. And so then I just kind of flip a switch and turn my magnet on and I kind of witness all my energy coming back to me and filling up that sun. And so I kind of see it like puzzle pieces coming back together and they're just gathering in that sun. And then as they come in, they're being cleansed and cleaned through like a pool of of um, living water and so I just kind of see them being washed off and they're all being gathered this is the first time you've ever done this sometimes it can take a little while so I just kind of watch and witness all those pieces coming back to me and then when your 
sun feels like it's full and all your energy is coming back to you, I just kind of pull like a little ripcord and all that energy just fills my body up and I see it kind of starting at my feet and just filling all the way up. And you just kind of like see it in your arms and it comes up and then you can just kind of notice that those spaces where it kind of felt like you weren't whole or just filled back up again. All your energy's yours. And you just ground that energy body out. And then what I like to do is I like to just imagine like a divine blueprint coming down and it's just kind of being placed over all those pieces of energy that I've called back just so I can make sure that they're functioning correctly and properly. I just download that through my cord up to God. Okay, so that's usually kind of what I do to prep myself to do this work. And so now we're going to move on to clearing. And so um, before I was feeling, before I jumped on, I felt like um, it was important to plug our adrenals in to like boost our energy so our body's functioning um, at full capacity to... Um, have our immune system function at full capacity. So what I like to do is I like to imagine my adrenal glands. If you don't know where these are, they kind of sit on your kidneys on the back. I think it's on the back side. Um, so I just imagine like them coming together and then a cord that I plug in to all the en your energy manufacturing systems. So there's um, Sola, which is the sun. There's Terra, I think, which is the earth. And then there's God. Um, which is the day energy, D-E-I, and then um, there's prana and chi. So what I do is I just plug those in and I can just, I see like a little battery pack, chart, like on your phone, the little battery thing that tells you how charged you are. So you can even notice and you can ask like, how charged are my adrenals? How much energy do I have? Are they functioning at 100% of your muscle tester? You can ask. And so then I just plug them in especially to God. And then I just imagine this cord is charging up my adrenals. And so I just leave that plugged in for as long as it needs to be. And then we're going to do some thymus tapping. So I just like to take my hand like this and I tap right your So your thymus kind of sits over your heart right here. And so you just tap. So we're just going to give our thymus a couple of beliefs. So you can say my immune system is functioning at a hundred percent. My thymus is filled with peace. My T killer cells are functioning at 100%. My immune system is at peace. My cells are filled with the energy of peace. And I kind of see this energy in the thymus was like only half being used. And so we're just going to flood our thymus with light and love and restore it to this functioning energy of 100%. So I like to tap on my thymus about in the morning about 10 times just to activate it. And I like to just send it lots of love and thank it for the job that it does of keeping my immune system functioning. So I just imagine just filling it with love and gratitude. Because when we're grateful for the job that our thymus does, then um, this energy of like wanting to protect us and keep us safe and to have the immune system functioning fully kind of fills that thymus and wants it to work to its full capacity. So I just like to say something like, I love you and I thank you for the job that you do in keeping my immune system functioning at 100%. Okay. So now we're going to move on to um, just clearing this spirit of fear. So we're right now we're kind of in this, the, at the end of this Pisces energy, Mercury just stationed direct on Tuesday or Monday night, Tuesday, basically. And so um, this energy is coming in of like changing and shifting and big changes coming in. Um, so Pisces energy is the very last in the Zodiac um, circle. And so we're going to be moving into Aries soon, which is the, the start of the Zodiac Chinese or the year. And so it's like starting over. That's what spring represents, right? So um, it's kind of like this acceptance, letting go. Um, I was seeing like feeling like this forceful type energy 
like people trying to force stuff this week and we really just need to like step into acceptance and surrender. So like if you struggle with that a little bit, you can tap here and you can say, I'm willing to accept all the positive benefits of living in acceptance and trusting that it is safe to surrender to God and to allow the energy of flow to come into my life. And so it's kind of like, like I just get this image of like the human will kind of stepping aside and it's been kind of like blocking things. And so when we kind of just set it aside and we let energy flow, God just brings everything we need to us because we're willing and open to receive that. So we're going to work with a couple of symbolic images here to just clear the sphere energy. So the first one I was seeing, I was getting an image of like a jail, a jail cell <laughs> and like someone standing there like holding and like watching, feeling like they couldn't, there was like this powerless energy, um, not in charge. It's like a watching and waiting type of a feeling what will happen. And then I literally heard the phrase like, am I waiting to die? <laughs> Which I think there's kind of like this freaking out kind of like feeling or energy that comes with all this coronavirus stuff. Um, so there's just like this watching and this powerlessness feeling and, um, definitely like I'm not in charge. And so, um, let's see here. So there's a, there's a couple of beliefs here. It's like, I have no control. So what I do is when I find these beliefs, I just like to, you can release them however it feels good to you. So like with breath, I use my hand and I just grow out my, um, central meridian and I just pull, cancel, dissolve that belief from my body. Um, you can imagine it on a chalkboard and you can erase it in your mind, whatever feels good to you. My friend Megan, she takes them out of a, a filing cabinet and she destroys them, whatever feels good. So I'm just going to pull cancel dissolve because that's just how I do it. So um, there's nothing to do but wait is the other belief. So we'll just pull cancel dissolve that. Um, there's this like energy of forces beyond my power, which obviously we live in that all the time, but it's more of like something it's going to be forced on me that I have no choice in, or I have no, and I just have to watch and wait and there's nothing I can do about it kind of a thing. So let's see, we're just going to ask, what can we do to, to destroy this energy of the jail cell? Okay. So I'm getting now an image of like lots of people in this cell and, um, Again, it's the feeling of being out of control, chaos, um, and it's like, so this is really interesting, this whole like toilet paper thing. I was watching this kind of energetically and I was seeing this energy of like one person choosing to do that out of fear and then it's like this person witnesses that person and they get sucked into it and then this person witnesses that person and they get sucked into it and it's like this once enough people do it, it's like this pulling energy and um all I just keep seeing people like being sucked in and so there's this feeling of like having no control and like trying to separate yourself kind of an energy and then it's like once you're in this gel cell you can't get out um so this is I was feeling this all week and I was trying to like identify what it was <laughs> my, oh oh no <laughs> my dog she's uh in the chewing stage she's just knocked over my cup anyways um so let's see, let's give, let's do some good beliefs here to kind of disconnect us from this energy. Um, okay. So uh, I'm seeing the the jail cell bars as they're just like the square and actually it's like looking through them, but all you have to do is kind of like walk around them and you're outside of that energy. So it feels like it's like a choice to me. Um, so we're going to just, okay. I want you to tap and say, um, if you feel to do so, <laughs> um, I have the power to step outside of fear. I have the power to fill my body with peace. Um, I choose to fill my body with faith and not, and in free from fear. <sighs> I have the power to change my perspective on this situation. So this, it does, it feels like a perspective and it's just like shifting that perspective. Um, so the perspective that everybody's kind of stuck in is like this, um, 
I have no control. So, um, I'm just trying to see what we need here. Mm, okay. So now I'm hearing, I don't need control, um, because I trust. So we can just tap and say, um, I live free from the need to control because I choose trust over control. I trust that all things are happening, happening exactly as they should. And so I have no reason to fear. I choose faith and trust over fear. I now choose to eradicate all cells in my body of fear. I release all fear and I fill my body with faith and trust. Whew. Okay. Now, um, again, I'd like to, to just see these gel cell bars and I want you all to just imagine like, oh, this is just a perspective and I can just step outside of it. And, I, and so just see yourself walking and just like choosing to be on the other side and leaving that behind you. Like that's just a perspective that we no longer need to have. Um, so it's kind of like, kind of like I'm reminded of this exercise that I do with people sometimes. It's like when you have something in front of your face, like if you put your hand up in front of your face, all you can see is your hand. But when you move your hand back, all of a sudden you can see everything around it. And it's like this thing becomes small. So, um, we need like a belief here about truth. So you can just tap and say, um, so I'm getting this like image of like truth as a whole. Um, and actually <laughs> the, so this phrase is coming into my mind. Um, it's something that in my church that we say, it's like all truth is circumscribed into one great whole. So it's like being able to see all perspectives. And so, um, you can tap and say, I now choose to have truth be my filter for all perspectives I am seeing through. And I now choose to release any perspectives that are not serving me. Okay. So I want you to just kind of witness in your mind and see that that old perspective is far behind you. And it's like you're stepping onto a path that shows um, truth and the way, like light. Um, and, and fear is just kind of left behind with that image. Okay. Is there anything else that we need to clear here? I'm getting yes. So let's see. Um, it's like the spirit of waiting. Um, okay. So I'm hearing, I don't need to wait to be prepared or something. And I'm not sure exactly what that pertains to, but it's okay. We'll just clear it. So, um, I guess it's kind of like, I see like this, like standing back here, like not wanting to give into the hysteria, but also wanting to be prepared and not knowing what to do is what it feels like. And so it's kind of like, um, so we can just tap and say, I release the spirit of waiting and I allow clarity and peace to come in so that I will know exactly what I need to do, if anything, to be prepared. And so we can just say, I'm, wedding, I'm ready and willing to receive the energy of clarity in my life and to have it be my guiding force. And so what it does is it just brings us like, I'm getting this image of like peace just filling the body and then like seeing things in your purview of like, oh, that's something I need to do. Oh, this is something I need to do. And it's like completely disconnected from like the energy of doing something out of fear, but more just out of like, oh yeah, that feels true to me. This feels like clarity and it feels like something I need to do. And so that way you can just make choices and, and like be on the path that's going to keep you well, it's just like an energy of safety. Um, because I think safety br also brings with it this spirit of peace. And so, um, but it's more like not choosing to do things out of fear of not being safe, but just knowing you will be safe. Okay, so is there anything else we need to clear? No. Okay, so we've cleared that image. So the next image I was getting was like a fast moving river. And it was like... It reminded me of how like in the center, the river moves fast and like kind of on the outsides of the water is um, calm or like gentle. 
but the second you get further in, you could be swept away. And so what I'm getting here is this is, we're clearing this to kind of be more of like a defense of not getting swept away with things that um, are, well, it's unhelpful is the energy. It's like, um, well, the word I'm hearing is hysteria. So um, it's like, I don't need to go into the hysteria. I can just stay in the calm water and still observe and be prepared and be safe without needing to like give in. Um, and also I feel like it's kind of this energy of like being able to live your life free from the fear of, am I prepared or those kinds of things. Um, and I'm hearing like the, the phrase like next steps. So it's like, um, next steps being clear. Okay. So we're actually, I'm getting that we just need to just blow up the energy of the river from our space. So what we can do is just imagine like a reading screen in front of you ground that reading screen out, send a grounding cord up to God, and then just see this river on your reading screen and then just blow it up. So it's not, and this just moves all the energy out of your space. Okay. And let's see. And we can just tap and say, um, my body, my mind, my spirit, my heart are free from the energy of hysteria. I have peace and calm and clarity and I am free from the need to give in to hysteria. I now cast all hysteria out of my space and my cells are free from the memory of ever living in hysteria or fear. And you may or may not have felt this energy, but we're just making sure none of it is in our space. Okay, do we need to do anything else for this? No. Okay, so one more image here that I was getting. It was a, was like a dark cloud, and it was like, it reminds me of, in the scriptures, if you're LDS, you will know this, but um, of Nephi's vision of when, like, or even Lehi, where he talks about, like, there being a dark mist and, like, not knowing where he's going at first and those kinds of things. So it reminds me of, like, this dark cloud and this wandering energy um, we, uh, again, some more of that waiting, wondering, trying to understand or get clarity, um, like to see the truth of things as they really are and what actually is like needed. So it's like this energy of like, I just want to know what I need to do. Um, and I just would like clarity. So again, the energy this week is, is supporting this because we're moving out of that Pisces kind of chaos energy into the Aries kind of like clarity, knowing what to do, those kinds of things. Um, so this is definitely going to be supported more as we move into next week, which is great. So, um, okay. So it's like a way down wandering in the dark. Where am I going? How do I find my way out kind of thing? Um, so this was really interesting when I was, um, trying to see how to clear this one. What I was seeing was it was like the sun. Um, and I was feeling specifically solar, like energy manufacturing, like the sun, like coming and like lighting up everything around you so you can see. Um, so it's like this like aha moment, but it also felt like a rising above energy. So it's like the fear is like a, this darkness and it was like the sun and it's like moving towards the sun and rising above the dark energy. And, um, it's like, it was like a change in frequency. So I saw like the frequency scale and just moving up. So what I was feeling the change in frequency or to kind of how to move out of this is like gratitude energy. Um, so I love gratitude because what it does is it, it invites in the spirit of love and I'll kind of explain what I mean by this. So when I say I am great, okay, I'm going to go back. Let's say I'm living in fear and I'm really scared and I don't know what to do about something. Um, it kind of feels like this dark, like heavy, like cloak type energy. And so you need something to kind of move you out of that and shift that frequency. And so gratitude, what it does is when I say something like, I am grateful. Well, I'll just tell you one thing I'm grateful for right now. And maybe I suggest you all do this exercise and notice how this feels in your body. But I am grateful for my new puppy because she brings me the spirit of fun and she casts out the spirit of fear and she has peace. Like I was watching her yesterday and I was just noticing like she lives from a place where like obviously she's not a human, you know, and she doesn't have the cares of a human, but she lives from a place where she just experiences life. Like 
for the most part, she's not living in fear. She just lets things come. And it's like a surrender type energy because the truth is, is we have no control over anything that we experience truly. Um, you know, when you surrender to what is the universe always has your back and God always has your back. And, um, the law of success basically tells us that. And so if we surrender to that, then it stops blocking things from coming to us and everything we need will just come like a magnet. It's just attracted to us. And so what I was, what gratitude does is it brings you into the frequency that matches that energy. Because when you're grateful for something, you can see what you do have. And then you're sitting and having energy, which also, um, so another thing I've kind of learned recently, and you may or may not know this, but, um, the word sin actually means loveless perception. It's a, comes from a Greek word. Um, and I'm going to say it wrong. It's like aribata. Um, and so it's this energy of loveless perception. Basically any perception that we have where love is missing is what sin is. So what God is always trying to teach us is that when you're sinning, you're just missing the perception where love needs to exist. And so in, in, um, and the term actually comes from, it's an archery term that means to miss the mark. So what gratitude does is it invites love in because you're grateful and it's a, it's a perception that has love as part of what you're witnessing. So like before, when we saw like the jail cell, that was a perception where love was missing, right? You can't see love. You can't see the energy that comes with love, which to me, love is all positive, high frequency energy, like gratitude and peace. And all of those are that perception where we see through love's filter. And so, um, basically the sun to me feels like love shining down and making this perception that's clear and it brings clarity and fear is cast out and any negative vibrational energy that we might've been wandering in and trying to see things through disappears. So, um, so it feels like we just need some good beliefs here. So you can just tap and say, um, I'm willing to see through love's perception. I now embrace the energy of love. My cells are filled, filled with the energy of love. My heart is in harmony with seeing through love's perception. My ego is in harmony with seeing through love's perception. I now choose to cast out the spirit of fear and replace it with, the, with love's perception. I now choose to embrace the energy that God gives me whenever I ask for it, with his, which is the perception of love. And um, so I want you to just kind of imagine, like see yourself standing on this path and there, if there's anything dark around you, shine love's light on it so that it disappears and disintegrates. And so you can kind of see in your mind, like any feelings or emotions that you may have had and just kind of shine that light on it and try to see it through a love filled perception. So this is something I've really been trying to practice lately. When I'm struggling with something, I ask myself, what is the love filled perception that I can look at this situation with? Um, so what this does is when you're looking at, and I love that Doreen. So when you're looking through love's perception, it literally brings peace to the soul because, you know, where love exists, nothing else can exist. And so this is a really important filter to be looking through at this time, because what it does is it just helps you to number one, have peace, but also know how to act in harmony with love, right? So if I'm living in the spirit of fear right now, I might, this is kind of a funny example, but I might go to Costco and buy 10 boxes of toilet paper or 10 packages of toilet paper. But if, if I'm looking at it through love's perception, I could see like, you know what, I'm going to leave some for the next person. And I trust that everything I need will come to me. And when I need toilet paper, it will be available. I know that's a funny example, but <laughs> hi, baby girl. <laughs> um, so it's just, what it does is it helps you to, hi, she wants to say hi. <laughs> what it does is it helps you to, it, it just, fear leaves your body when you're seeing through a love-filled perception. So, um, 
it's, I'm feeling this surrendering energy kind of coming in and it's like a trust. It's like, I trust and know that God is, is always watching and taking care of me. And so it reminds me of the scripture that says, consider the lilies of the field and, or the sparrows. If I, if I, if they are taken care of, why would I not be taken care of a child of God? You know, this, the universe always has my back. God always has my back and everything I need is already mine. If I'm willing to surrender to that energy. And so sometimes we block things with these fears or these limiting beliefs that keep us from receiving just because we have that energy. So what you can do an exercise you can do is you can sit down and just journal for a minute and just say, what am I fearing right now? And get really honest with yourself, like be willing to just see it because the moment you see it, then you can release it. You can choose something different. Um, Nick Ortner says something that I love. He says, you have to be willing to see the dirt in order to clean the house. And so um, just releasing that fear of just seeing what's coming up in you and being willing to surrender to it. And then, oh, this is what I feel. And uh, like, so for instance, something that was coming up for me was just like the economy in general, because my husband works in construction and I kind of work in a field where like, you know, sometimes what I do can be a luxury to people. And so I was having this fear that was kind of coming in that, um, like if the economy crashes, like we will have nothing. And so I sat with that fear for a minute and I just listened to all of the emotions that were coming up. And then I say to myself, okay, what's a new love filled perception that I can see this through. And it was really interesting because then I was inspired to read, um, something that, was a blessing that was given to me. And, um, and it basically told me that I would be, I would always have the necessities of life and I would never want for anything. And so, you know, you can find your own peace and comfort that comes from a certain place. But, um, I guess what I'm, what I'm challenging you to do here is is to just choose, um, a, a new perception and step above or outside of that dark energy and pick something different. Choice is the answer to everything, right? We always have a choice what perception we're looking through. Um, and as long as we're willing to examine that perception and see what we're creating, we can change it. And that's the, literally, I think that's the whole thing that God's trying to teach us here as we walk on this earth is that we are living in creation constantly, whether we know it or not. We're creating fear in our life or we're creating positivity or we're creating love and trust. And it's all about choice. So um, one belief that you can just kind of give yourself is, is I'm now willing to accept all the positive benefits of seeing that I live in choice at any given moment. I choose positive perceptions and I choose to live in a space filled with light and love, free from fear and negativity. <sighs> and so... I also challenge you to, at this time, to find something that will help you kind of step outside of thinking about things because we're in this like thinking energy right now. So find something that just allows you to step outside of your body. If that means like going on a walk and just like literally get in your body. So what I do is I notice what's going on around me. So like I like to take my kids over to Shiloh Conservatory and we walk the path and I I notice the ducks in the pond and the grass waving when the wind's blowing and I feel the sun on my face and I get back in my body. So one of my favorite books, The Untethered Soul, he talks about in that, that we are just what's happening in any given moment. The past doesn't exist except in our mind. The future doesn't exist except in our mind. And so if we can just get back in our body and just know that, notice that I am safe in this moment, nothing bad is happening to me right now. And so what it does is it moves you out of that negative energy and it helps just align you with the peace because you, you can notice you're in your body. You notice that you're safe and there's nothing to fear. And, um, that doesn't mean that we won't experience, you know, things that could possibly, you know, be scary. But again, that's all a perception, right? So my friend Shalise talked about recently, if you, any of you guys follow her, she said, um, you know, suffering is, is literally the definition of it means to allow. And so suffering is a choice. And so we can either suffer with what's going on around us or we can choose something different. And that's really the key to life. Hi, baby girl. (laughs) So, um, Do something that gets you back in your body. Spend at least 10 minutes today. Make the choice to spend 10 minutes getting back in your body, 
you know, embracing the energy of safety and love. And when we do that, the more we do that, we disconnect from that river type energy that we I was seeing. And we're able to just rise above that. And we do not have to sit in that fear energy if we don't want to. And so I'm just sending you guys lots of love. And I'm so grateful that you were here to participate in this with me. And I definitely feel like when we come together and we choose to like do this together, we, you know, are, there's power in that. And so I'm so grateful for you guys joining me today. And, um, yeah, I just, uh, I hope that you have a beautiful and blessed day and I'll let you guys go. Thank you.